up YouTube? Today's video, well, we're going to be looking at one of the most iconic items in POA history. I, mean, I almost feel like a POA historian with all these uh, stories, right? But basically, this is the most mere dagger in POE history, and it kind of looks like a dinky piece of shit, right? Like, what is this thing? This thing looks like it couldn't kill a single thing. Actually, it reminds me of a weapon I would probably have an Elden Ring on one of my runs with no upgrades. So, yeah, so this dagger, I'm going to go over the history of it, what builds were using it, why were people even using daggers in the first place, right? Because I'm pretty sure no one uses daggers nowadays, right? Especially for attack builds. Besides Pneumatic Dagger, I do think that Pneumatic Dagger actually do have a place for the Poison Lightning Strike build. But we're going to get into the history of this, and let's see what happens. So a lot of people might be wondering right away, why would anyone ever use daggers without OP uh, Claws are, right? With the life get on hit. Well, back in the day, Night Stalker was a really overpowered node. This node right here, Night Stalker, used to be the cream of the crop of the best nodes in the game. I think it had like crit chant, crit multi, and it probably also had some leech or something else. I don't really remember what it actually had. But basically, Night Stalker was the de facto node to get for all dagger builds. And most importantly, Nightblade wasn't added until 3.8.0. So for the majority of POE history, right, daggers were outperforming claws. And no one really considered to use claws, right? I don't think life being on hit was really valued as much as it is today especially with like having acuity so there used to be like insta leech with vault pack so claws were pretty much not needed in the past right so daggers reigned supreme above claws and ambusher was the base of choice due to its high attack speed and crit chance pretty much the exact same reason why imperial claw is used today and physical daggers were definitely the play because I don't know if people remember, but they only recently, not too long ago, buffed Ellie Rolls on one-handed weapons and two-handed weapons and bows and stuff like that. But basically, Fizz Daggers were the best. You would convert it with Hatred, and then you would also run like two damage auras of Anger and Wrath, and then be able to get... You're still pretty much elemental, but you were playing Fizz Conversion way back in the day, which really blew away any sort of Ellie Dagger that was even possible to be made, right? So Nightblade support was added in 3.8.0. So you might be wondering, what was the build used to play with this monstrosity of a dagger, right? Well, it is Low Life Spectral Throw. Now, this is probably one of the most iconic builds in the past. This would pretty much be equivalent to how popular Tornado Shot is nowadays. But this was actually the best build. And as you can see from the screenshot, 218,000 DPS. This was... A tooltip worthy of a screenshot, right? So this just lets you know how far back DPS used to be in the past without like... um, Yeah, I mean, this is just how far... I don't even remember if Ascendancies were back in the game. I don't think they were. Not 100% sure though, right? So basically, the reason why you go low life spectral throw is because Crown of Eyes used to be an insane item for attack builds in a sense that you could get a more damage multiplier with low life pain entombment. So that's pretty much 30% more damage. So let's go take a look at one of these builds. I did find some digging from the past. So this is one of the people who did the whole build. So he has the Loaf Bane Dagger. He has a shield, 501 ES. This is actually probably better than some shields today because they nerfed the energy shield rolls. And it also has 78% spell damage, right? So nowadays you'd be hard pressed to find a 500 energy shield shield at all right a crown of eyes same thing so crown of eyes was exactly the same except pain attunement used to work and then they changed it so i think this is already like retroactively changed so there's no legacy crown of eyes or something like that and this is not really that great compared to today's items right it's pretty much crit chance crit multi flat es crafted percent es and int and then two diamond rings so another like T1 ES, triple res, 1 to 2 flat fizz, and 19% energy shield, and then pretty much the same ring. So you can pretty much see how bad items used to be without influence mods or anything like that. So this is a legacy shavs, I think. Yeah, legacy shavs. There's also like double legacy shavs. Now, if you're wondering like what sort of links people used to use in the past, spectral throw, crit damage support, fizz to lightning to convert it because you have so it's actually pretty hard to convert it all. Greater multiple projectiles, elemental damage of attacks, and increased crit strike. So pretty similar links to what most people use. 
Rampage Gloves, or Aziri's Acuity. Sky Forth, which used to be actually like a 40, 50, or 60x unique. I don't even remember, but it used to be one of the best uniques of all time. But basically, people used it to not have stun. So the stun threshold is based on 500% of your mana. And then you would also have some reservation efficiency or reduced mana, which is what it was called back in the past. And it also helps you get power charges because it has that one line of 25% chance to gain a power charge on crit. And if you want to see a most broken flask, I'll probably make a video about this flask in the future. And you can see that this flask is absolutely absurd, right? 30% of lightning damage leads just life and mana. And look at the next slide. Life and mana leech are instant during effects. So this is pretty much the reason why no one ever used claws. Because you pretty much had insta leech every single time you attacked. And you would pretty much leech your life to full. Now, eventually people transitioned to playing Blade Flurry when it got released. And Spectral Throw then became Blade Flurry. And then every single Blade Flurry person started using this dagger, right? And what is this dagger? Well, you might be thinking that this dagger must look like the craziest thing in the world. And it just looks like a, it's 60 ones. Like you would never be able to chaos this item. And with how archaic crafting was in the past, I mean, when Chris talks about like chaos orbing items like that, that's pretty much how items were made, right? So this was most likely crafted with a bunch of Eternals and Exalts as crafting methods back then were non-existent. I think people estimated like the cost of Eternals and Exalts like thousands to craft this item. So in today's terms, you could be saying that this item used to be crafted with so much money, more than anyone's wealth, right? But you could also see that 38-7% multi, right? So you might be wondering, why is the item not perfectly divine? Because almost every single mirror item nowadays is perfectly divine. And the thing is, dividing items was a huge part of the problem, right? And people would try to beat each other with divines because you can't target divine suffixes and prefixes only. And then you also can't do it with a lucky roll, which is rolling it twice and taking the higher value. So in order to hit a perfect divine in all six mods is actually insanely hard. And in a lot of cases, almost as hard as making the item itself, right? Trying to divine this perfectly. And this item probably has had hundreds and hundreds of copies. I don't even know if it would go into the thousand range, but definitely the most mirrored dagger of all time. And yeah, it's kind of crazy. I'm going to showcase a little bit later in the video of a dagger that just completely blows this away with today's new technology. So before ending the video, you might be wondering where is this dagger now and has it gotten upgraded, right? Has anyone decided to use a Harvest Craft or Heist Enchant or... Harvest Enchant or Heist Orb on it, right? Or did someone Vol Orb it even? But I actually did some digging and I found this one post on Reddit, right? So this guy says, I now own Loaf Bane, original, this is my story. And it's a pretty cool story. So pretty much TLDR, the guy spent months farming the currency and he also had to negotiate to buy it from someone. And he was actually really afraid of getting scammed. So he had to fit in like some sort of mirrors, eternals and exalts in the trade window in order to do it right so pretty crazy and one of the main things is he actually wrote a nice story i can link this in this video description down below and you can read it and pretty much afraid of getting scammed so they decided on a compromise of a mix of mirrors exhaust and eternals and he bought it and he was really happy and he's made most of his wealth from flipping and farming and he did get lucky with legacy shafts because I guess he had a lot of shafts and it became legacy and then he made a bunch of money, right? So I thought this part was pretty funny. He completed the trade and he noticed his inventory was empty. So where was the dagger, right? The dagger was not there, but his heart sank for a moment, but it was just in the inventory, in his actual weapon slot, right? So kind of funny, but imagine spending all of that time farming, buying it and thinking you got scammed or the item disappeared. And he doesn't want to say how much he spent on it. Maybe it's like some embarrassingly high amount. And he doesn't want to vol it because no balls, right? If I had a dagger, I would vol it because... I don't know, maybe not. But you might be wondering, what does it look like now? Proof of verification. So he actually links his mirror thread on here. And this is the mirror thread. And when you see an item is verified, you, see, you know that it still exists, right? So this guy actually still has the dagger in his inventory. I don't know if he's actually playing the game anymore. So, oh, he's actually, he actually has a level 99 character on Arch Nemesis Lee playing Righteous Fire. Well, that's pretty cool. And he has a Mage Blood. So this guy is a farmer and a Giga Chad, right? 
So basically, he still has it in its original pristine condition. No Harvest Enchant, no High Storm. And yeah, it could probably be made a lot better nowadays with those additions. He could even try to get 30% quality with Betrayal, right? But maybe it's better to just leave it in its pristine condition. So what do we learn with all of this? Making a once-in-a-lifetime mirror item allows you to transcend time. People will talk about the item forever. And I'm pretty sure if you ask anyone who played PoE in the past, from 2012 to 2017, everyone knows what Loafbane was. So I'm pretty much making this video for a lot of people who might be interested in what happened to the item. And for people who wanted to see an iconic item from the past that will one day be inducted into the Hall of Fame with the best items in the game, along with Path of Maps Bonus League, right? The dagger, however, today is actually hot garbage. Like you might be thinking, well, wow, that dagger is amazing with 61 rolls. But without influence mods and without the modern day technology of increasing damage, you can see that this is actually the number one ambusher I can find on the soft core. And it is actually 703.7 PDPS. Now, the reason why this dagger is so high is because it has the hybrid warlords roll, which gives it more crit multi. It's also crafted with essence attack speed. And he also actually has crit chance quality on it instead of 38% crit chance. And it also has the high store for physical modifiers at 8% increased effect, along with getting 30% quality on Hillock, right? So the original low bay was 569 PDPS and now it's 703.7 PDPS. However, the name lives on, right? And it's about your legacy and your last name. And maybe one day daggers will rule again and people will start crafting ambushers again and we might see some change but without nerfs to claws and life gain on hit i do not see that day happening in the future or who knows maybe i'm wrong maybe next league will be the dagger league right but that sounds like some copium but thanks for watching everyone i hope you like these type of videos let me know down in the comments below i hope you find more mirrors exalts mage bloods and ambushers than me and see you next time bye Stay